So this graph in front of you, the red line is systolic blood pressure. And systolic blood pressure is the measure of blood pressure when the heart beats. The yellow line is diastolic blood pressure, and that's a measure of the blood pressure when the heart's at rest between beats. So we get two measures of blood pressure. The normal is 120 over 80. So what, what this graph is showing is blood pressure as a person is on a treadmill exercising. And as you move to the right of the graph, the gray, the incline of the treadmill mills increased. So the exercise is getting harder. And as you see, the systolic blood pressure goes up. Why? Hey, the heart's beating more. It's got to put more fluid through the system. So then that creates the pressure in the system. But note how the diastolic blood pressure decreases a little over time. And that leads back to the mechanism I referenced, how when blood flow increases through arteries, the endothelial cells trigger a release of nitric oxide, which then relaxes the smooth muscle. There is a phenomenon called post-exercise hypotension. And what that means is after aerobic exercise, your blood pressure is going to go down for a while. Just because of the mechanism I described, and you can see it depicted graphically here how it works, and then the person stops exercising, the systolic blood pressure will drop immediately because the heart slows down. And that vasodilation that occurred from the aerobic exercise is going to persist for a while. So aerobic exercise provides a tool to at least acutely manage blood pressure. But what's particularly cool over time is that through training, through consistent aerobic exercise, the endothelial cells' ability to generate nitric oxide increases. The system gets more efficient. They get better at relaxing your arteries. That's one of the mechanisms why aerobic exercise is prescribed for managing hypertension. The kind of aerobic exercise, you know, anything to get your heart rate up will work. You know, the benefits of Tai Chi include getting your heart rate up, but also all the relaxation, the coordination, the balance training, and many of the other elements that make Tai Chi such a wonderful exercise. So I'm going to take a pedagogical risk. I'm going to bring up an equation, Poisson's law. And Poisson was a 19th century French physicist and physiologist. And he came up with a relationship between factors that govern the flow of fluid through a closed system, like our cardiovascular system, and the factors that contribute to resistance to flow. And he boiled it down into this equation. This is Poisson's law. Let's deal with it in words. So according to Poisson's law, the flow rate through our circulatory system varies with the pressure, the radius of the tube, the artery, the viscosity of the fluid, and the length of the tube, which makes sense. So this is a fraction. So if we increase the denominator, then the flow rate goes down. So if we make fluid thicker, so we increase the viscosity, it would make sense that the flow rate would decrease. And that's what this says. If we made the tube longer, it would make sense that the flow rate would decrease because there's more distance to travel, there's more friction against the sides of the tube. If we go on the top of it, so the, the numerator, if that gets bigger, then we increase the flow rate. So if we increase the pressure and we hold everything else constant, that makes sense that the flow rate would increase. If we increase the radius of the tube, then there's more space for fluid flow and that would make sense that that would increase the flow rate. But note, the radius of the tube influences the flow rate to the fourth power. What's two to the fourth power? 16, all right. So if we increased any of the other amounts by two, it would just increase the flow rate by two. If we increase the radius by two, it increases the flow rate by 16. And that is why the diameter of our arteries is the number one powerful influence on both our circulation and also blood pressure. So we can flip this equation around and get resistance to flow. And resistance to flow will also equate with increased pressure. And in the case of a cardiovascular system, blood pressure. If we decrease the denominator, the lower part of the fraction, then resistance to flow is gonna increase. And look, if we increase the radius of the tube a little bit, that's changed exponentially to the fourth power affects the resistance to flow. The big point here,
the most powerful thing we can do to increase blood circulation and to decrease blood pressure is increasing the radius of arteries. That's vasodilation. How do we do that? Relax and exercise. What we do in Tai Chi, right? I want to show you a really important graph. So on the vertical axis, it's called hazard ratio. And it's hazard ratio of all-cause mortality. At the top, number one, that is the risk of dying if you get no physical activity. And then along the bottom is an increasing amount of physical activity during a, a week. And it's expressed here in METs. Those are metabolic equivalents. So one MET is the amount of energy you expend at rest. And then the more active you are, the more METs you expend. We can translate this into minutes. You'll see there where there's a range on the horizontal axis where it says 150 to 300 minutes of moderate exercise per week. 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise is a target put out by leading health authorities around the world, CDC, WHO, American Heart Association, because the science supports it. If you get to 150 a week, you're getting nearly the maximum benefit of reduction in risk of dying. And with cardiovascular disease, the leading cause of death, then you're getting the benefit of that risk reduction. But note, the reduction in risk starts sharply with any amount of physical activity. So if you get a half of 150, 75 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise, it's going to drop your risk of cardiovascular disease and other causes of death substantially. So this is graphic representation of why you hear 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise, the recommendation. And hey, you know, you come to two Tai Chi classes a week, you got 90 minutes in, then you go walk for an hour, you got your 150 minutes. You come to three Tai Chi classes a week, then you've got 115, 125 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise in. You go for a couple more walks and you're there. A couple important points about this. All activity counts. This is physical activity that gets the heart rate up and leads to the benefits of an increased heart rate that I talked about. Increased blood flow, the relaxation of your arteries. The other point is, hey, 150 is the target, but anything helps. In other areas where I teach, many have heard me reference the science, the, the research into a particular benefit, whether that's Tai Chi as an intervention for osteoarthritis or Tai Chi as an intervention for falls prevention in older adults. There is some science on Tai Chi as an intervention for hypertension, and it's promising. The science is not that extensive, and the consistency among the studies is such that it prevents me from making as strong a statement on the underlying science as I can in some other areas, where the research is more extensive and the quality of the studies, in my judgment, seems better. But... We've got some studies here that show a reduction in blood pressure of 10 to 15 points after a 12-week Tai Chi intervention. And that can move a person from in hypertension range down to either low pre-hypertension or normal, 15-point drop. So there is some indication out of Western science that Tai Chi is an effective intervention for hypertension.